Hello, everyone. If you can hear me loud and clear, will you please? Um, hey, Dave. Hey, Bree. Can you hear me okay? I sure can. Okay, great. Am I a part of this or can I sit back and relax? Back. I got it. All right, I don't know how to sit back. <laughs> I'm being signed in as a presenter. I don't know how to sit back and relax. So, uh, all right. <laughs> you can chime in. You know, you can always chime in. Okay? Oh, and you know, I will, given that invitation. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to, I really have no idea how to take my video off. So, I'm just going to shut off my video okay. and mute my. Good. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. We still have just a minute or two. We'll get started in just about one minute. Oh, you're muted, Dave. I'll be the stand-in for Ryan today. Okay, yep. Have you explained Ryan's situation being in Kansas with the rolling blackouts yet? No, but I will explain that as well as my own. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Bree down in Houston, Texas. That's right. It's funny. It, it's uh, being the guy up in Boston. Usually we're the ones dealing with nor'easters and winter storms and everybody's laughing at us. Yep. We're the ones being laughed at because we couldn't keep the power on down here. Energy capital world, you know? <laughs> Good morning, Michelle. I love the chat, Brie. I just love it when everybody chats with us. Hey, if you chat, choose the panelists and attendees. Love to, um, I want everybody to see the chat here. Hi, Nicole. Oh, Mighty Citizens yeah. out of power. Mighty Citizens, I'm sorry, you guys. It's I'm right there with you. I just got power back um, last night and we weren't sure if we we're gonna be able to do this today, so. Um, I'm really happy to be here because it was just dicey. We went from Sunday night at, I don't know what time, maybe early Sunday morning through last night with no power. Woke up yesterday morning, 14 degrees. So it's just been a couple of days. Hey, Bree, I got an opening question for everybody. Well, I, and you know, I'm just kind of like chit chatting. As soon as you start, I'm done muting shutting off my video but until then i'm going to chit chat with you so i got an opening question i just put in there i hope it doesn't spoil any of your fun i said what what different kinds of data can you think of so this is your this presentation is data upon data what do you know about your members and how so but you're going to focus on because i've seen the presentation five kinds of data so i'm curious what people out there think are the different kinds of data very curious what they say. Yes. There are so there are probably infinite, honestly, right? Certainly infinite data points out there. Yes. Okay, well, I know we only have 30 minutes, so I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. But feel free, like Dave said, to to enter in some some data. Oh, there we go. So profiles, engagement, history, yes. Email interactions, event attendance engagement scoring points yep membership data sorting and filtering looking for hot spots and missing the missing data and data from star trek the oh i like data he was a weirdo man the weirdos are good though right like weirdos are the the android yeah <laughs> all right well let's get going here so um i'm brianna wheeler for those of you who um haven't seen me yet um, I am the Director of Marketing at PropFuel, and I'm the newest member of the team. I've been here in some capacity since about last May, I believe. So I'm um, newer, but this is my first um, kind of time driving the, the webinar ship. So um, I am happy to be here today. Like I said, thank you all for coming. Um, for those of you who have been without power today or uh heat or whatever like i'm just i'm hopefully everybody's warm right now and clearly has internet so that's good news right hey brie i'll bet people are kind of like who's that weirdo in the hoodie hijacking the thing let me introduce myself really quick and then i'm gonna go back on mute 
<laughs> I'm Dave Will. I uh, I oftentimes do do these webinars, but I thought I was going to be on vacation up in New Hampshire skiing. That fell through. So here I am hijacking the webinar as best I can. I'm Dave Will. I'm a co-founder of PropFuel and I've been in the industry for a long time, uh, typically with, on software, working with associations. And I really, really enjoy working in this space as an association professional. And with that, Brie, I'm out. I may try to answer some of the questions in the chat, maybe spark in some conversation, but that's where I'm going. Love that. Awesome. So thanks, Dave. Um, so yeah, and I, um, so while I've been at Prop Fuel since about last May, I, uh, most of my experience is in association marketing communication. So um, for a lot of you here today, I'm one of you, certainly one of you. I know um, a lot about um, marketing communications for professional associations, and I've, I've felt the pain points that you probably feel. So um, I am happy to, to present um, to you today. So um, I've already introduced myself. Um, Ryan is may or may be, not be on today. He's um, going to sit back as, as Dave is. Um, he's also in a potential blackout situation in the Midwest. So um, I am driving the ship today, like I said, and Prop Fuel, um, for those of you who may not be familiar, is the con conversational engagement platform that treats your members like real people. So uh, today, specifically, what we're talking about with that is um, data and different types of data and, and how to treat your members like real people through the data you have and maybe the data that you may not also have. So data, it is interesting and it's, it's dynamic. Um, when I started sitting down to think about how we wanted to talk about this, I think the, um, the, the challenge is to kind of make data seem interesting, <laughs> which sometimes it can kind of seem a little bit dull, but actually data is very, very interesting and dynamic. And um, a lot of your association data probably comes from various sources and systems. You likely, you might have an AMS, you might have marketing automation system, and um, much of this data is transactional, so members, uh, member information, basic profile data, like um, one of our attendees mentioned, and then also behavioral, so clicks and opens and um, other measures of what people are doing, what they're doing on your website. And so, of course, all of this data can be useful, but when it comes to engaging members, um, there are gaps because the data is can be stale. It's who knows when it was entered, who knows if it's accurate anymore. Um, also, it may not be an indicator that because they did something that they're interested in that thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, the key is to take what you do know or think you know and give it context and also find out what you don't know. And um, how we do that is by um, giving context to the data that you have and then getting information from directly from the voice of the member. So today, the ones that we're focusing on, well, there are so many um, um, in the, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat here. While there are so many forms of data, um, we are focusing today on profile needs, satisfaction, interest, and intent. And so, um, we're just going to move forward here into profile information. And profile information is probably one of those common data forms that you experience, um, especially when it comes to gathering member information. So it's gathered during a transaction, maybe when they join, maybe when they attend an event, maybe then when they register for a free event. There's some level of profile information there. And so it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but the key here is that it's accurate only at the time of capture, really. You don't know if um, I worked for a professional organization previously where uh, there was alphabet soup, what we called it, behind um, many of our members' names. They had six, seven different credentials, and they were always working on the next educational um, endeavor. And so whether it was a credential or a certification, so six months to a year down the road, um, you know, it may not be accurate anymore. 
and it ages quickly. It does. Uh, people get married, they get divorced. Um, and so what happens over time is while at the point of the transaction, while it may be really valuable, accurate information, um, down the road, it's just, it's not. And it can cause big issues because it starts off with maybe something small, like they change their email address or they change their job. And so they don't have the same email and then they're not getting their member benefit. But then six months down the road, they feel like they're not getting value and they may not um, rejoin. So um, over time, this profile data is very important. And secondly, member benefits, and I'm sorry, needs. Um, needs data. So this kind of data is really a tangible, what we can think of as kind of tangible data. So member benefits, what specifically do you need? What educational information do you need? What knowledge? are you missing? What industry resources do you need? And um, these change over time and they definitely need to be revisited over time because as we learned with COVID last year, something that's important in January of 2020, um, likely they're not having the same need as when we get to May of 2020, right? Um, there might be some more essential needs there that the association has never needed to provide before, and now they do. And so getting that uh, information directly from the voice of the member is, is, is important. Satisfaction. So satisfaction is, of course, a member of a, a measure of performance or perception on anything big or small. So it could be, you know, the full on event survey. How did we do? Um, you know, that's how kind of how we think of it. And or it could be something small like is this member benefit, you know, serving you well? Do you use it? Uh, the key to this is when we, it comes to satisfaction data, we're not absolutely not talking about a survey. A survey is cumulative in nature. So you're sending out something to say 5,000 members and saying, okay, maybe 200 of you responded and now we're going to get put that data together and make something useful of it as a, as a unit. Um, what we're talking about when we want satis when we look at satisfaction data is that the satisfaction, um, we want to know how satisfied an individual member is and then be able to take action on that, again, directly from the voice of the member. And so um, it's absolutely not a survey. It's cumulative. We're taking an individual look and then taking individual action from there. Interest. So interest, a little bit different from needs. Um, we think about needs, again, as more tangible. Interests are, are more a 360 degree view, degree view of the member. So it may or may not be member benefit related, uh, member benefit or event related. It might be more emotional or personal. So for example, um, if you're interested in public policy advocacy for your career, that's much more of a, a personal interest and um, something that the association might not know a member is interested in if um, they don't ask, or maybe that changes over the time. And because of what's going on in um, politics, they are now interested and invested in that part of um, the, the industry that they're a part of. So again, getting that information for the, from the voice of the member is really important. And finally, intent. Intent is very, this is my favorite one. It's um, a lot of the of what I've laid out so far here is about either current or past information. So like, you know, profile information, what was, um, what is your general information? What is your contact information? For example, um, that's in the present. And then what do you need right now? How are you satisfied? You know, how, how, how satisfied are you with, with this element? It's, it's present. And what we're talking about with intent is very cool because it's future. It's say in the near future, what do you intend to do? And it doesn't necessarily tie directly with what you will actually do, what the member will actually do, but it's an opportunity to spark a conversation and then lead the member to action from there. And I'll give a really great example of that in just a moment. So, um, and I see a bunch of chat coming in here. I will look over this in just a minute. We're just gonna keep rolling here, but I see that Dave is, um, is uh, 
Oh, I got the chat, Bree. In fact, I'm I'm sparking the chat. I'm trying to get people talking in here because you can learn a lot about people from from the things they say. So yeah, I'm digging this. Don't worry about the chat. I got the chat. Okay. And and Lisa, how do you collect this data? That's a that's a great question. So we'll be talking about that in just a moment. So the current technologies the are built to broadcast, not really to listen. And so the three elements of that is that they are powered by guesswork, meaning that when you see an email report that says 17 people clicked on this link in an email, you might assume that they are interested in that thing. And then from there, you might take them down a path to um, that interesting thing, which they may not actually be interested in at all. So um, it's, it's guesswork sometimes, whether it's persona-based, whether it's um, um, just behavioral or just information that you have on them based on a, a specific credential or title. It's guesswork. You're guessing when you broadcast out and segment without um, getting their input. Secondly, it's one way. So broadcast is one way. You send it out, it goes, it lands in an inbox. It may or may not be read. And that's kind of the end of the story. And then from there, it's, a, it's also a dead end, meaning that you can't do anything as far as that action. You can have a marketing in, say, we're thinking marketing automation systems here. You can have a flow that says, okay, based on the way this person answered, we can then take this person down this path. You can do that. But each time you do that, you're sending an email that is one way and that's the dead end. They receive the email and then they have to decide what to do with it. And so what we wanna do instead is try to engage the member in a two-way conversation that enables um, action from there on the individual level. And we call it at PropFuel, we call it um, ask, capture, and act. So you're inviting your members to engage with asking a question, you're capturing the voice of the member and identifying their needs. And then the workflows that are automated um, drive the human interaction and to engage and deliver value. So I'm gonna give a couple examples of that in these five data types. Profile. So in the profile um, example, we, you might've done this before, ask your members to log in and update their profile data. I had a situation um, in my last um, association role where um, I was the publisher of um, the organization's magazine. And so we would send the member data over, this is a printed magazine, they still do print. Um, we send the member data over and we say, here you go, here's all the member data. And every single time the publisher would come back and say, we, um, there are 300 email, um, addresses that came back incomplete. And so every single time I'd go back to membership, I said, hey, we got to figure something out here. We have to get these member. This is a tangible member benefit that they're getting in the mail and they need this member benefit. And so what could we do? Really, the only thing we could do is send out an email and hope that we have the correct email address for them and say, oh, um, you need to update your address, but how do we know if it's going to happen? It may or may not. So it's just, it's this, it's, um, it's a broadcast here. Why don't you go do this instead in the example of a title change. So instead in, um, if it's directly related to profile data, you could say, has your title changed instead of saying, Hey, go update your profile and go log in, go update your profile. It's a simple question. Has your title changed? And if the title has changed, then you can give them a way to update that information. And then that information can be written back to your AMS or your marketing automation system, wherever your central data um, is going. So um, that's a, a, an example of how we're demonstrating interest with a question and then getting the information back to the system. And of course, not everybody's going to respond to that, but we found that we have better success with that than just sending out a blanket, hey, you should go do this. Secondly, how likely, to, um, sorry, um, satisfaction. So in, satis in when it comes to satisfaction data, 
um, specifically talking about member and membership, uh, members are most likely to not renew after the first year. And so that first year, it's really important to engage members and make sure that they're getting what they need and, and asking them questions and keeping them involved in digitally. And especially that's important right now because over the past year, we haven't had the opportunity to connect in person. So a first year member who might attend a, an in-person event just hasn't been able to over the past year. We are going on year two, aren't we? Almost into COVID land. Um, so it's really important to keep new members engaged and satisfaction data is, is the opportunity to do that and get the individual snapshot and then take action from there. So um, late in say an annual, the course of the year of a membership, you might um, send out an email that says, how likely are you to re recommend membership to a colleague? And um, the, the general uh, concept there is, is, are you satisfied? And then we want to get the insights in that individual response and then have the member engage in their individual level of satisfaction. And what, so for example, if on a scale of one to 10, this, a, a person responded um, one, I'm not likely to recommend a membership to a colleague. That's probably a 911 situation. That's something where you want to find a way to um, connect that member with somebody on staff and say, why aren't you satisfied? What went wrong here? Um, how can we help? What, how can we serve you better? That might save you, that one step might save you a membership um, and, and get you the renewal. If this person is just um, able to just connect directly on a, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one level and just connect with somebody that might make the difference. Um, micro interactions really make a difference when it comes to fulfilling needs and making members feel like they're, they're um, valued. And then on the other end, on the high end, say somebody says, I'm nine out of 10 likely to recommend membership to a colleague. You can, um, from that point, instead of just saying, oh good, in this little pie chart, we have them as a nine, you can direct them to say, oh great, we're so happy that you would like to recommend the association. Why don't you um, give us a testimonial and share from your voice how you feel about the organization? Um, it gives them an opportunity to, to voice how they're feeling. And, and, and then also another option is a referral. So you can say, okay, well, if you're satisfied, then do you have a colleague or do you have a friend who might also be interested in joining? And as we know, word of mouth is a really great way to um, get a, a new lead, new member leads um, into the pipeline. So um, that is satisfaction. And then moving on, interests. So when it comes to, oops, this is moving around on me, sorry. Needs. We do, Dave, did we do needs already? We didn't, right? I'm just making sure we're not bouncing around too much here. No, you're good. Okay, just making sure it popped around on me. So needs. So when it comes to needs, what is, is happening now? What are you experiencing? What do you need? It's that tangible, what's happening right now? And so we have a client who asked um, last year, maybe it was around April or May, what's the biggest challenge you're experiencing right now? And that was a question without even saying it directly related to COVID, which is what, what's happening right now? How are, have things changed? Um, priorities have likely shifted. And so you're asking what's happening right now. You're looking at the pain points, uncovering some potential pain points and or important topics of interest. Um, maybe there's something trending in the industry that the association's not really paying attention to. But um, if an individual responds that way, that it's important, then maybe there's some educational materials that need to be developed um, to support members in that way. And then you're acting to deliver on that, like I said, with, um, with resources and direct information on, on, on how they can get um, be, be supported in that way from the association. Interest. So, um, Again, interest is a little bit more what I would call soft. It's like it's less directly related to membership benefits, and it's more like three the whole person. What interests you? And so I think professional advocacy is a really good example of this. Um, I mentioned it earlier, and then 
Another area where um, interest might come into play is keynotes. So say you're having a conference and you um, have some keynotes, uh, say you have a keynote that speaks on a couple of different topics. You could send something out, whether they're registrants or even um, just prospects for the event and say, hey, what keynote do you find most intriguing? And from there, you can say, okay, well, what if a bunch of people have this interest? Then we're gonna go ahead and, and, and the keynote's gonna focus on this area. Um, and another way you can do that is say, okay, well, if you find this interesting, then look at these five different sessions at the conference that are on that topic. And why don't you register? So it's a great way to, to get input and, um, and, and get the, the voice of the member in there and then drive the action again. And then finally intent. Again, this is my favorite one. Um, this is just, I don't, so mind-blowingly simple to me. And it's something that I wish I had 10 years ago. Um, simple questions about future intent. So for example, do you plan on renewing your membership? It's such a simple question, but what do we often do? We often say, hey, we're gonna send out at three months out, at two months out, at one month out, at two weeks out, and three days out, an email that says, you are expi your membership is expiring, please renew, go renew. Hey, did you remember? You need to go renew. So um, there, there's a, it's, it's, it's a different, um, it has a different feel when it's, it's passive, when you get a broadcast email out and you say, oh yeah, sure, okay, I have two months left. Of course I don't need to. But if the question is posed, do you plan on renewing? It's, it's, it's something that they get to think about and then they get to think and say, okay, yeah, I do plan to renew. And from there, if they click on the email and say, yes, there's a way to go ahead and lead them right into um, that action of, lead, of, of, of acting on their intent. So um, that's, I don't know, it's, it's, and you can use that with so many different examples, event attendance, um, member acquisition, volunteerism. Um, would, you, would you be interested in volunteering? One of our clients had, I think it was 200 responses directly that said, yes, I would like to volunteer. And if you didn't ask the question, you wouldn't have known. So you're getting your, your, your whole membership engaged in a group and then individually as well. So that is the end of my um, long chatting, which I feel like I've been missing so much in this chat. So Dave, if you wanna pop on, and I, I, I haven't seen all the questions come in, but I would love to hear what everyone is saying here. <laughs> Nicole says, my passion is clear. Amen to that, no kidding, man. I really, really am pretty darn passionate about this, and I'm typing out a response to Heather. Um, who actually is a client of ours. So thanks for coming, Heather. Uh, so instead of typing it out, I'll, I'll say the answer. But let me explain where my passion for this comes from, first of all. It, um, it, I had a company prior to this called Peach New Media. It was a learning management system that ultimately we sold to um, what is now Community Brands. And I love the the my employees. I, the product was good, and I I really enjoyed working with our clients. But the product was just a slightly better mousetrap. The reason Nicole, you're you're sensing so much passion about this, is because as an entrepreneur, it feels uh, our any entrepreneur will, will say the same thing. It's our intent. It's it's our strong desire to create value. Right? It's, we're not ch chasing a giant check. What we're chasing is value creation. It's about creating something that does something. And we've done that. We've, like, this is a really cool product and it works. And that's the coolest part about this is like, it just works. Everybody says, and somebody said this in here, I forgot who, um, some, somebody said in here, uh, asking is really important. And it is, but there's no way in the market to ask questions at scale other than surveys. But surveys don't get you connected with the individual. Surveys to help you study your, your market as a whole, but that doesn't help you create stronger connections. That doesn't help you renew your members unless you're actually doing something at the individual level. So yeah, I'm pretty darn passionate about this. And uh, Heather, to answer your question, go ahead, Bree, I'm sorry. 
I am as well. As I mentioned, I'm, I've been in association marketing for over 10 years. And I, I literally, I was talking to him, a former colleague the other day. I was talking to her the other day and I said, I seriously, every single day, I look at Prop Fuel and I think I needed this five years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago. And I know we're talking about the product, but it's just the truth. It's like, I could have solved this problem by just asking a simple question. So it's, I'm passionate about it as well. I'm so glad you're you're a part of this team, Brie. We got really, really lucky finding you when we did. So I'm really glad you're a part of this. Um, Andy Duncan, thanks so much, man. So Andy is also a client of ours. He says, yes, it works very well. Thanks, Andy. Um, uh, the member response rates to PropFuel are better than any tool I've ever used in, in the association space. Actually, I would love to talk to that response rates in just a minute. But let me address, if I could, real quick, um, uh, Heather's question. She said, would you have made that last example an open-ended question? Unfortunately, uh, Heather, maybe you can clarify which example you were referring to at the time. That was at 1122 Eastern. Uh, I, can I can talk a little bit about open-ended though. Generally speaking, I like open-ended questions as a follow-up to a question that somebody can click on, whether it's multiple choice or something else, because you're going to get a lot more interaction, engagement, for lack of a better word, uh, if somebody can just click on something. But oftentimes when people click on something, they're kind of already engaged and they're willing to give you um, feedback. Uh, Heather says it was alluding to COVID struggles. So yeah, again, related to COVID struggles, I would have asked like a general broad multiple choice type scale type question that leads then to a second follow-up. Um, Andy mentioned, I'm sorry, I'm totally hijacking this, Bree. No, um, Andy mentioned response rates. Here's my thing about response rates. Response rates are, uh, are, are what I consider to be a little bit of a vanity metric. Um, they're important because we really want to engage as many people as possible. But what matters more than anything is how, were you able to really connect with the people that you needed to connect with as it relates to that question? And if you look at like over the course of a year, I'm gonna pause for a second. If you have kids, I've used this analogy a billion times, so if you're a client of ours, I guarantee you've heard this. If you have kids like I do, three teenage boys, and you go for a drive with them in your car, the likelihood that they're going to talk to you if they're like my kids, it's about one in five. About 20% of the time, they're gonna to talk to me. The other 80% of the time, they're on their headphones, looking out the window, and they they consciously won't turn their heads like past the, the, the little to the right of, of straight ahead because they don't wanna even come close, not even peripheral eye contact, right? So, but two out of times, they're gonna to talk to me. Like, and they sometimes they just talk and talk and talk and I just can't get a word in, even me. And so that same concept happens with just about anybody. It happens with your members too. So if you send out a survey at a time when people don't wanna to talk to you, they're not gonna to talk to you. But if you keep sending questions throughout the year to new members, or to if you're constantly reaching out to people that are lapsed or in the renewal process, eventually you're gonna get them at the right time. This is a perfect sales tactic too. Any salesman will tell you that you gotta keep in touch so that when the time is right, you're there and ready and waiting. So that's my philosophy about response rates. Having said that, yes, we get much better response rates because it's friction. It's so easy to answer questions. Is this, uh, Bree, are you gonna send out the recording to this? Yep, just responded. Yes. Cool. I'm looking to see here. I don't know that we have any other questions. Um, hey, do, uh, do you think, uh, are there any case studies that were, like, what are we going to follow up with? <laughs> Usually this is something I'd ask you offline, but I'm sure you're going to be sending out something interesting aside from the recording. Yes. Um, we will. So I have a couple of ideas in mind, including a case study, which I think I think some of you have already um, seen it, but we'll send a couple of resources out along with the recording. So Andy Duncan, who's here in the webinar, he has a great quote that I reference every now and then. Here's another thing. I'm going to I'm going to brag a little bit and I, I hope you don't judge me too much for um, for bragging, but oftentimes and, and I think I can say this out loud in front of our clients, oftentimes our clients 
become raving fans of the platform because it just freaking works. And and uh, Andy Duncan, here I have a quote that sh- shortly after they signed on with us, he sends me this note. And Andy, I don't know if you know, I, I captured this. He says, Prop Fuel is badass. I swear I was just about to call this member to check on the renewal. And then they got an alert that they were planning to renew. So anyway, thanks, Andy. I appreciate that. No, I don't see any other questions here. And I know we're, we've, we're only going to keep you for 30 minutes. It's a, a quick one. So um, if there aren't any other questions, we just really appreciate you all joining us today. And um, like I said, we'll, we'll send up follow in, follow up information. Ooh, making your life better. That's amazing. That's Andy. Yes, it is badass, Andy. Yes. I attest to that. So again, thank you for joining us. We'll send you some other resources. Um, Dave, thank you for the assist. And fun. everybody stay warm and um, have a great rest of your week. Hey, nice job, Bree. Bye, everyone. Bye.